Uh, don't be scared, nah. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, was it convincing, Jimmy? Did it sound backwards? Continuing where we left off, this little window. Which you may be surprised to find out, as I was, that this actually belonged to a place called Mud Island, or Fort Mifton, which is over to some of the other videos that I've done here. A star fort! Look at that. Would you just look at that? Right down the heart of Pennsylvania. Now this particular star fort, which also explains why this door is here. Stairs to nowhere climb and doors to nowhere... Flood, apparently. These properties are all on Mud Island, along with that shifty trench coat rocking fellow. I don't know about this. We can take a brief little dive here. Oh, she. There she is, Fort Mifton. And just in case you're following some of the other videos that I've made here, I'd like to point out the ever-present track and subsequent ovals. Even here, on the outskirts of America, we have evidence, albeit rather hidden, in the case of these, that in the States was not separate from the other grid of power that we see everywhere. On Germany Hill, I feel my thrill. Butchering the old fetch domino song. Now you're starting to see here more photographs of outlying buildings, foundational issues, cracks in the pavement, things of this nature. As if on cue, this picture of basically nothing. But there's often a reason for these, other than thorough survey. That building is kind of confusing. Why would you break up every single window? Oh. You often see these little buildings, like, what is that, a shed, storeroom? That's what I would have thought too, Governor. But as it turns out, more often than not, those little rooms actually conceal, like this, right? Hey, what is it? Quit teasing it, right? Look, another poorly thrown frisbee. <gasps> oh, God, we've made him mad. <laughs> access points. So all those little, tiny, little one-person buildings are access points for an underground portion of this uh, base, which I will add... They've kept in immaculate condition. I mean, really, just Pennsylvania. Can't, I can't uh, express it enough. Great job. The interior, too. Look at that. I see that the, you guys are pretty tight wads about taking your shoes off upon entry, aren't you? I can tell. You're on a tight ship here. My God. We've been burgled. And again, this arsenal, we're told, uh, pretty much abandoned. This is a big complex. Another of our classic style old world bridges. I just love what you've done with the foundation here. <laughs> my buildings are alive again. <laughs> I guess my fooling around, I accidentally saved that one permanently. Sorry, building. If, you, if I'd left you alone, look what they would have done with you. No wonder he's angry. And I'm sure that there's some architectural style that I just don't understand that's above my peasant brain. Hmm. Do you think those were initially that low? He said with a knowing smirk. Ah, oh, Jimmy the Dwarf was here. He looks like he was drunk again. God damn it, he freaking smashed in the wall. Jimmy, you're freaking old tiny car and get the frick out of here. Cool entrance. Franklin Institute. Another very well-preserved, massive structure. I'm certain that they built this for no reason, and they thought, well, never mind. We don't need a place that has a hundred rooms in it. Simply not enough people here, not enough infrastructure to, you know, upkeep this. Let's let it go to shit. Seems like a very limited market, like people really buying that many eagles these days. And another patently ridiculous building, completely unnecessary, and adorned with very unfashionable stylistic trim. This, of course, being another free library. And again, the free library is odd. For something free, they seem to have an extravagant amount of money. These buildings don't seem like they're in disrepair, or contraire, but rather immaculately preserved, and seemingly far too large for their purpose. This is another Philadelphia Free Library. You start to see the fix. Here's the Haddington branch of the Philadelphia Free Library. You don't get to get this building unless you're in on it from the get-go. So these government services, public services, quote-unquote, seem like more of a way to have a choke point on all the information that's available. After all, if you don't own all the libraries, and you own what the general public is having access to. This is pre-internet, of course. That was, this was probably a major tool in their arsenal. And they obviously uh, valued it, as evidenced by the selection of building. And let me guess, when most of the people moved into Philadelphia, the, the library was already there. It was just uh, another feature. Here would be another one. Compare this to the average historic building in Pennsylvania that we've seen. Any difference? Anything you can pick up on. Here's the Oak Lane branch. Here's the Pascalville branch. I don't know if I'm saying that right. All these are very old world, very foundationally challenged. And who knows, this one looking more like a castle. All of them ridiculous constructions for 
free services, public services, I mind you, is a great example of your South Park branch of the free library. I love the name. And next door. Hmm. There seems to be a marked difference in, I don't know, everything about this. They kick the grandeur. The windows are intact. I mean, these are remarkable buildings. After you see so many of them, you get numb to it. This is the old Quakers meeting house. The Friends meeting house. The Friendship, Friendship Engine Company, number 15. Whatever that means. Probably it was a fire department at one point. And compare that to the average Pennsylvania historic building. It appears there's enough money for one. Simply not enough for the others. This is a roof house, we're told, but I think we know what's going on by now. Inside of this door. And the Garden Theater. Which behind the gaudiness here, you can see, is another very classical, first-rate, hashtagical building. So you know the theater's in on it. Here's an item. An organ device. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I actually don't know. I'm sort of a graveyard, gravestone. And look at this old beauty. Or, I guess it was an old beauty. Now it's just so Pennsylvania. I mean, this is like... And I do believe that most of these brick buildings that we see looked like this in their heyday. But all this has been stripped away by scavengers, jawas, things like that. Interesting to see this kind of a... <laughs> this is a moat around a regular house. Oh my god, the prisoners escaped, Larry! And here in the tiny town of Bethlehem, a interesting house with a very split floor plan. And what would appear to be an entirely unnecessary cupola dome and antenna up here. I just, you gotta hand it to them for being so consistent across the world with their style. You know, everybody likes the same kind of look. It's so weird, don't you think? <laughs> Rice block? Block rocking beats. General refractory. That's a tacky ass sign if I've ever seen one. There's that bab dude. Dude, there's that bab dude. She'll take a picture of her while she's on looking. Oh, she's looking! Even in the small homes. And we're back! Seems we can't escape that place. Yeah, that looks normal. Why? Uh, I see the George Burnham house has been taken over by what? Appears to be witchy. That'd be a castle in most places. That's gotta be one of the most egregious examples of a subterranean entrance I've ever seen. Somehow, while stylistically these look the same, you know, there's something different about these than those libraries. I can't think of what it could be. Hmm. Anyway, this is apparently a, where the coffee company uh, once was. Now it's got that old Pennsylvania thing going on. And this as well. Looking like they too got the old Pennsylvania bug. Yet again, what seems like a perfectly acceptable home isn't Sandy's closet still hanging on. That house looks like it's floating away on water. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause here just for a second and, and to just discuss this George Washington sleeping marquee. Well, this is allegedly, I, I don't even know if I have pictures of the actual... Recreation is what it is, but this is the site registers a store. It's the tent that Washington apparently used. It's a sleeping tent. He used it at Valley Forge National Historical Park, and there is residence for about one week, it says. His primary residence for one week before he moved to the Isaac Potts house. However, even after this, the tents would be used as an outdoor extension, and it was in this tent that he met with figures from the Revolution and issued orders, and he spent several hours a day in isolation in this sleeping tent, All right? And throughout the war, when they would travel around, the Revolutionary War, uh, they'd bring the tent and they would pitch it in the front yard or, or near at hand. And he would go there for privacy and write his important dispatches. Okay, so assuming that all that's true and not made up. Uh, they've got some fancy, you know, we used LiDAR 3D scanner and worked with heritage management and we scanned the tent in four days and we, you know, created three-dimensional drawings and all this stuff to recreate this tent. Right. Why are they pushing the tent so much? Like, who gives a shit, right? Like, who cares about a tent? Especially if you only live there for a week. Now, I don't know why the students at Texas Tech were doing it. Obviously, they're not scheming or anything. But the reason why projects like this get funded or seeded... Now, now at the heart of this deception, I believe, is an anti-human agenda. There's some trans-dimensional, there's some entities, demonic, alien, whatever. They're at the heart of this. Okay. I don't think it's just, it's just humans. A lot of them are just used by tools. Now, whether these people are in direct contact with them... I doubt it. I would assume more like the ideas are planted in their heads, or they have possessed certain people that have allowed it, and this is how they spread their agenda. They do things, they work through people like this. and to a lesser extent, you have had ways to deceive and to lie, and to sell your lie, and to further cement your lie, which is all they, that consumes them. Then this makes sense. It makes sense that you want to push the idea that there weren't extra buildings lying around. Even the great General Washington required a tent to travel. 
And uh, it took a week for them to even get him a house. And this is the man that was leading the country. I believe it's stories like this that subconsciously implant in your head a picture of what it was like back then. Now, despite the fact that they, the army was constantly in movement, and they must have constantly found places to stay to shield them from the weather that weren't tents, it does play into their hands to have this idea of even the leader of the country having to rely on tents. You know, not not that there's just a shitload of extra buildings, which clearly there are, because the population was nowhere near what it is in the what it was in the 30s, at the time of the Revolutionary War. And there's and what have we seen? Like 80% of these historical buildings are not only massive, but they're abandoned. So anyway, just just a just a different spectrum with which to look through certain thing projects like this, which get funding, which just seems so pointless. Like who cares what his tent looked like anyway? Nobody. But if it helps you solidify something in the back of people's minds, that's of extreme value. Moving on. Oh, yes. The useless feature, stylistically. Another useless feature, and a flagpole with no flag on it. Am I doing it right? This is a brewery, with some unnecessary details, I believe. More dodgy foundations. Now you see the way the, now you see the, way the photographer took this. Possibly from the one angle, the only angle from the front, in which you can see the subterranean basements. Houses like this are all on their radar. They need to acquire them, let them decay, demolish them. You can tell Pennsylvania's got the jump on this. And I believe that they were the first state to be thoroughly surveyed, which is why there's so many more properties there. Some of the other states are laughably small and consist primarily of barns and um, a few military structures, which we'll get to and you'll see eventually if you stick around. I know this is this, <laughs> I have no idea if this makes even for good viewing, honestly. I, I find it interesting, but this could be incredibly boring and no one could really care. But whatever. In the event someone does, it's out there now. Well, that looking very ludicrous. And it's the town hall, of course. Just from another era. Town halls don't need to be like that. These churches, too, just stripped, boarded up of all ornamentation. all, And it's just brick. Just brick with a steeple now. Functionless, purposeless. And this is just to remind you that uh, we, you know, we, we, we did this. We, we did it. Amazing old photo of the old world beauty of the Grand Avenue Bridge. And I mean, just beautiful work on the cast iron and the lighting. And in the background you see back here, I mean, what a beautiful place Philadelphia once was. And it's just a shithole today. But I mean, this is a fantastic building. My God. And this is, of course, the <clears throat> Corn Exchange. Gerard Trust Corn Exchange Bank. Yeah, that's exactly what comes to mind when I think of Corn Exchange. Again, we're going to take a picture of this building from the only angle where really you can see something else going on. And, oh, I'm sorry, the Gladstone Hotel just had to go. It was just, you know, too beautiful looking. And while we've got this building half demolished, you see here these square holes where these beams are? They're now left open. Remember this, he said with an obvious intentional foreshadowing. Another bank with an amazing building and useless columns. The just dwarf <laughs> and defy logic. And the old Glebe house. You trying to tell me something, Mildred? I need no rocking chair. I still got neon in my veins. This gray hair don't mean a thing. Mom, can I go to the castle? It's not a castle, Sonny. And these bad boys are on their last legs here. Cool, yeah. Very good for business when, you're, when your lot next to you looks like that. Very good for business when your front when your front of your building looks like that. I mean, Philadelphia just seems really good for your business. Or actually, this is Cannonsburg. My bad. This church looks like it has been uh, looted. Like, all the ornamentation clearly just unceremoniously ripped off. Anything that was in here, anything that was in over here, here, I mean, just looks looks stupid. It looks like it's been defaced. Things taken off the top here, and you still have these electric coils. It's like a bunch of little cyclops, like, KKK guys, like, Get out of our town. That's a weird building. Hmm. So are you the original owner, or you want to explain to me what happened here? Well, yeah. This used to be a mill, you see, and water would go in there and, uh, empower everything. But we were like, fuck that. Let's board that shit up and dry this bad boy up. We'd, we'd rather pay for dirty electricity. <laughs> Strange alley. Do photograph for the survey. <gasps> this looks like an owl. And, uh, what about here? Did you not like sunlight in the basement? Or just, uh, was there some other reason why you decided to break up? in these perfectly good basement windows. A railroad station, huh? Really? And no one is suspicious about the look of this railway station, huh? Looks totally normal, huh? D mm hmm Oh, I suppose this is an outdoor furnace. Oh, yes, of course. You know how it is when you just want to go outside and just heat the general area. Who knows what all this was? But a furnace? I have my doubts about that. Whoa! If that is- what the f is going on there? That little walkway? That is insane. Wish I could see more of that place. This is supposed to be a meat house near McAlvey's Fort. That's what all this is. I don't know what that is. I mean, none of this is probably what they say it is. What is going on here? Gray Towers, huh? 
This door should go down another six feet. Wow, that is insane. Bay Tower's carriage house. And there are no castles in America, huh? Of course. And yeah, all of this makes perfect sense and is totally necessary. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, no problem, Jerry. I'll be right there. I'm just gonna go pick up my old car that I let Pennsylvania take care of for about a year. Oh my God. What, what, what did you guys do to it? What do you mean? We gave dope Pennsylvania treatment. We basically threw her out to the elements. To us? Well, we're the wagon works, boys. What does it look like? See, we got this wheel here, and this baby. I'm carrying this saw. He's got the world's weirdest mustache. Ain't it obvious? Bunch of no stick, no good, shiesty mother. Beautiful place. Just gotta love the quad split floor plan idea. Do you guys come up with that yourselves, or what? Ah, the print shop. Not sure. Oh, the Heinz Company. The Heinz Company factories. Yes, of course. Like every good factory, we definitely need a four-pronged church steeple. And Mr. Hines can sit up there and look out the windows of his empire and imagine 57 more varieties of ketchup. The Haynes Shoe House. Uh, I can probably say with some confidence that this is not an old building. But it is novel. <laughs> yep. Robert Trump. Builder, eh? 1882. You don't say. And I, I just love what you've done with it since then. The Hamilton Well, or maybe it's a tower, actually. Maybe it's a chimney, probably. I like that they put handholds down there, should, should you fall in. That, that is uh, thoughtful. Uh, duh. There's that shifty trench coat guy again. What's he doing staring at that obelisk? Get your own file symbol, you greasy pervert. Refractories Company Engine Repair House. Really? Out here, huh? Gina has A's? Oh, man, I'm gonna have to tell Mark. He's gonna be pissed. Well, boys, we got the bricks here. We got them all lined up, blocking these entrances here. And, uh, this is the world's most dangerous game of Brick Jenga. Who's going first? Hmm, the molding room. You know, the games that these rich people play, it's like this. To me, that looks like more land and more items and more material in the form of, like, weight of, you know, substance. What it took to construct this mill or whatever this is, this refractory plant. It's more than I'll probably ever own in my life. More than what most people will probably ever own in their life. Of the stuff that I have owned in my life, I have never abandoned any of it. I never walked away from any of it, left it for someone else to clean up, left a huge blight on the land, and uh, and what they'll say is, like, well, the company went insolvent or bankrupt or whatever, and, uh, you know, they just walked away from everything. Okay, um, so does that mean that the bank owns it now? Because if the bank owns it, or the government owns it, or whoever, why are they not taking care of it? Why are they not clearing the rubble? And furthermore, I can say, without knowing for certain, but I can... I'd put money on it at the founder of this place, the one who went insolvent, whose business idea failed eventually, and who had to uh, abandon all this stuff. Do you think that he's uh, destitute on the street somewhere? I would imagine he's probably living in a pretty nice house. And he still has enough material wealth that he hasn't even thought twice about ever coming back and selling any of this. Piecing it off, nothing. Why? Because he's on to do uh, doing something else. And why aren't we more like that? Like, why aren't we? If, why, why are these bigwigs? How come they just separate their money like that? To where they can go bankrupt in one company, but still individually be privately wealthy. Seems to me like if I lost my business, I'd lose everything I had on top of it. I, don't, I can't imagine a scenario in which uh, my business goes bankrupt and I still maintain my lifestyle. And now I just have the freedom to, you know, think for a while and then you know, come up with a new idea or something. Get involved in a new industry. Uh, so there must be something about finances, some way using trusts and things like that to separate, to enable this to keep happening, right? That I don't think the common man knows about, meaning they don't teach us about this. This is an avenue uh, worth exploring. Hey, Jimmy, why don't you come down to my new shop? Just a humble little millwork. Oh, boy, what do you got here? Well, yeah, there's got a basement down there, but, you know, it's tight, but, uh, you know, I think, uh, think it'll work for me. By God, Jim, it's a five-story building. Oh, yeah. It's totally unnecessary. And what have we here? A docking place for vehicles, I suppose? Hmm? Perhaps dirigibles? Perhaps trolleys? What is the meaning of this? No, no don't go in there. A boarding house. Hmm. In 1858, discoveries were made which indicated that the dotted hatch section was built after 1880. How in the f*** is that possible? Let me get this straight. In 1858, discoveries were made which indicated that the dotted hatched section of the charcoal house was built after 1880. So in 1858, they discovered that something wasn't built until after 1880. Can anyone help me understand that? I don't know. I don't know what to even make of that. Except it's the usual bullshit. And here we are, back in Philadelphia on 3rd Street. Burke Salvage, huh? Finally, a business that makes sense, because there was lots of that going on around here. Golly, look what they've done to that beautiful Stony Creek River. 
just beautiful. And this is probably the river. This is Johnstown, but this is where that horrible flood happened like a hundred years ago. And they've not cleaned up after it. What the fuck? Electric antennas. Electric antennas. Prevalent. Omnipotent. 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 Omnipotent.
and this here is the political branch. I mean, I'll go through all this stuff, you know, in a better, because I have better examples of this. I just wanted to show you a big, uh, you know, a graphic that was, and a bunch of random stone buildings just off in the forest here. Not really sure what uh, what the story behind these are. Tenant houses, apparently. There's something wrong with this place. This is a, out in Lock Haven, uh, Isaac Packer Farm, and, uh, what is this, another furnace? A lime kiln, really. Okay. This is a well, they're telling us. And what is going on here? I do not know, but this property. Uh, obviously, these are modern versions of these. Not part of the surveys. Um, I, I mixed them in when I could find them. The one's still standing. I'm going to guess that this was not originally part of the building. Just throwing it out there. You know, like This looks like it was brought over and parked next to it. Give it some sort of entryway. A lot better than this fixer up. Fucking A, man. So, just some shocked by all these. Call that number. Oh, that was before area codes. Wow. That was back when my phone number was just 55. This is the ice cream man. His truck was recently stolen. This is just incredibly building. And nobody cares. Nobody wants to know why there's a basement. Oh, the Blair Company building. Look at that thing. God, it is just a monster. And let me guess. Well, uh, hard to say if it's in business or not. She usually means no. Here you go, another one. Another fucking building. Massive building with amazing brickwork. Smashed. Every fucking window. Smashed. It's unbelievable how much of this there is in such an early period. What happened here? I, I'm wondering if these buildings were ever even occupied. Like, they just were always like this, based on what happened before, whatever event happened. They just put signs on them to make them look like that. I mean, what else? Or has the industry been that gutted? Like, these all were pumping shit out fueling this during the wars and then just immediately millions of jobs lost like what if so like damn and of course of course you can go downstairs everyone has a basement you get a basement and you get a basement and you get a basement and you get a basement oh that's larry from three stooges by the way he does the drag thing from time to time larry hey larry come over here and say hi to my friends also a mound a sacred mound. Uh, or just the dirt that they removed from over here. When I was a little kid, I used to imagine that these were rockets attached to houses that they could just take off anytime they wanted. And maybe they are. Oh, we're back here again. There must be some duplicates. She's like, excuse me, can I help you again? And he's like, bitch, we've been through this. 